I'm surprised at the comments I have received wearing Acro's latest fragrance, Ink. In fact, I wore it all weekend long one weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I received two comments on one day, positive compliments, and one uh, one of the other days over the weekend. Very, very surprising, and I did not expect the compliments with this one. Acro's Ink is launched, and I'm gonna review it for you today and discuss the compliments as well. And in this video, I'm gonna rank the entire Acro collection of fragrances as well. So find out about Acro Ink coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in, this is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Acro Ink and also a general overview of the entire Acro collection of fragrances. This is the seventh release, it's Ink. And uh, you know, I discovered the brand in uh, France, in Paris at Javoy. And uh, for some reason, I wasn't impressed by the collection. I don't know, maybe it was the time of the year. I don't know what had happened, but Later on in that same year, I went to Lucky Scent Scent Bar, and there I discovered Smoke and immediately fell in love with it. So I've been a fan of the collection, but it didn't jump out at me for some reason uh, when I first discovered the brand. Perhaps it was because I had sampled so many other fragrances, but Smoke still remains to be my favorite fragrance from the collection. But I'll tell you all about Acro. Before I do that though, if this is your first time tuning into this channel and you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. I, as I said, I did not expect the compliments with this one because when I started wearing it, I thought this is one dark fragrance, extremely dark, one of the darkest, most rubbery, oily, leathery vetiver fragrances that I've ever worn. So uh, I went to this, I sprayed it on once, uh, I went and I started walking around and I decided to stop into a grocery store, picked up a couple of things and I'm in line and this lady comes behind me, she's literally going like that and I noticed it, I noticed it, I heard her and I said, it's my fragrance. She goes, oh my god, what are you wearing? I said, it's Acro Ink. She goes, I don't know what that is, she said, but it smells so good on you. I said, uh, it's just this uh, niche house. I, she didn't really know about fragrances. So I, on my phone, I pulled it up and showed it to her. She goes, I gotta get that. I said, it's very masculine. She goes, no, I like masculine fragrances. It smells really, really great on you. That was one of uh, three compliments I received this on the, uh, wearing this particular fragrance. Uh, it, it was amazing. I'm sh surprised. I mean, uh, uh, one of the compliments I received was from not a friend, but an acquaintance I met from a friend that said your fragrance is really, really great, but it was just surprising that I got all these compliments for this particular fragrance, and I just did not expect it. Anyway, Acro Inc. is a 2022 launch. It's created by Olivier Cresp. All of the fragrances from Acro are created by Olivier Cresp. If you don't know this perfumer, he's created some of the biggest perfumes in the world. Among them includes Angel, Mugler's Angel, the original woman's fragrance from 1992. That was 30 years ago? Yeah, 30 years ago. He also created Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue for her or for women. There's many, many other fragrances. He's also created Kenzo's Jungle Ohm and a lot of others. So he creates all of these fragrances for Acro and I think the brand is run by his daughter. I would call this a woody leather fragrance and price size is 100 ml for 160. The notes for ink are vetiver, black ink, jasmine, and birch. They only credit these four notes uh, and if you don't know the brand, at least the first six fragrances were all inspired by addictions, uh, but I could see, you know, ink being inspired by addictions. I know many people that are addicted to getting tattoos and this is the inspiration here, tattooing and things like that. And I could see the, the inspiration with this particular fragrance because even though it's vetiver, as I was saying, this is the darkest, most rubbery, oily, leathery form of a vetiver. Uh, it's just, that's how dark it is. Imagine you're just walking into a, a dungeon of darkness and uh, you know, all this leather and rubber and oil is hanging around. I, I don't know, that's, that's the visual I get. It's extremely, extremely dark, but when you put it on, it brightens up and you know, your, your perspiration, your little sweat and the uh, you know, wind hits you and the wind hitting you and the smell off of, you know, wafts off of you and hits somebody else's nose. Uh, I guess they seem to like the smell on me, but um, 
the fragrance is extremely, extremely dark when you spray it, but as I said, it also opens up. It does open up and it does sweeten up, but it is definitely lots of vetiver, and this is the darkest kind of vetiver. And the black ink is, I think, what does this kind of rubbery, oily, leathery-ness. But it's the black ink plus the birch, because there's lots of smoke in this particular fragrance as well. It's very, very smoky and uh, almost like burning rubber kind of smoke or, or you know how when your tire when you have to brake and you, your tire on the road kind of creates this kind of a smell there's that kind of like a burned rubber kind of a smell here but it's very very woody and there's a dampness here and vetiver typically is associated with dampness so there's a little bit of a humidity and i think your body heat creates a little bit more of a humidity and i think vetiver in general for me humid weather is perfect for it even though it's a dark note it's a heavy note it's a weighty you know earthy woody kind of a note I think humid weather is perfect for it because it kind of softens it up and the aroma kind of rises from uh, the vetiver note but you know I didn't expect to enjoy this one I, I am enjoying it and I think I'm enjoying a lot more because of the positive reaction from people when I wear this particular fragrance. I don't know if they're smelling it exactly as I'm smelling it from the bottle because it's a really, really dark fragrance. Dark, smoky, very, very rubbery, leathery, and then oily as well. Of course, inky because it's utilizing the note of ink. It also has great longevity. It's um, uh, intense and, you know, you have big, big projection with this one. See, I think it's probably, in the co entire collection, probably the darkest most intense not really the most in well yeah it's one of the most intense for sure and uh the most masculine this is definitely very very masculine like the uber uber masculine kind of a uh a note and uh, if you're into these kind of very very na masculine notes or fragrances you definitely have to uh get your nose on this one of course if you're a vetiver fan you should uh I should also warn you, there is a little bit of an animalic undertone and I think it's because you're kind of creating this leatheriness here and uh, maybe there are some other notes that go in to create this particular fragrance and they're only, you know, mentioning just these four notes. But there's definitely an animalic undertone. It's not a lot, but because it's so strong and um, dark and leathery and inky rubbery, I think there's something under there that, that kind of makes an appearance to create for a little bit of more of like a ferocious kind of animalic quality along with all the, you know, the leathery, inky, rubbery uh, smokiness there. I like it. I do like this one. And I'm going to tell you where it ends up on the list because I really love a lot of the fragrances from this house. And I wasn't expecting to like this one a lot. I, I really like a lot of the fragrances. There's one that I cannot get into from this house, and I'm going to let you know, and then also let you know where this ends up. But yeah, go check this one out. I do recommend it, especially if you like dark fragrances, if you like the idea of leather, smoke, rubber, burning, you know, anything like vetiver and things like that, definitely I think you should get your nose on. So that is Ink, a 2022 launch. So the one that I just can't get into with this in this house, and all the fragrances are great except for me, Malt, I just cannot wear. There's a definitely very, very potent seaweed note in here, and I, I'm really, really sensitive to it, and I don't want to wear it. Malt is whiskey, rum, leather, seaweed, and patchouli, but uh, like I said, this is the one fragrance I just cannot get into. It's absolutely not for me. The seaweed in this is so amplified and me being so sensitive to it it's even more amplified and uh, makes me not want to wear it and i love boozy fragrances i don't get nothing but a seaweed in this it's that's all i get so sadly at number seven it's malt now the tricky part happens because the rest of the fragrances are so good that i had to put it somewhere so at number six haze Haze is an absence, absinthe fragrance, not absence, absinthe focused fragrance, which I really like, but I had a hard time putting it somewhere. It's ended up at six because everything else gets really, really good. This one's good. I don't hate it. I don't hate it like I hate malt, but haze is, you know, very green, very, very camphoric, a little bitter, also herbal and aromatic. And it's the great combination of these notes to create for a green experience. And I think this one is inspired by, is it inspired? 
inspired by absinthe. I can't remember the inspiration for this one, but I do like this particular one and I like it for its kind of green uh, aromatic herbal spiciness. So haze is at number six. Now it gets really, really great at number five. And I had a hard time putting number five and number four because the latest fragrance fits here somewhere. Uh, but for five, I put night. And for night, you really gotta love cumin to enjoy this one. I absolutely love cumin in fragrances, and a lot of people, you know, you know, sampling this collection of fragrances, will probably enjoy malt overnight. I just can't tolerate malt, absolutely not. But night is super, super sexy. It's absolutely delicious. It's Bulgarian rose, cumin, saffron, and agarwood. So it's cumin to the max with the rose. The rose is kind of sweet and bright and floral and really, really pungent and jammy. But there's lots of dryness with this particular fragrance. But the cumin adds that kind of spicy dryness. But this one also has a little bit of a leatheriness. A little bit. But it is a little sweaty. Definitely it is. And night is, you know, it's about sex. It's uh, inspired by sex addiction. So they gotta have cumin in it. But it's really, really great. If you love cumin, uh, you gotta sample this one because it's definitely cumin lover's dream come true. So where does ink end up? It ends up at number four. Sure, the top three is my absolute favorite of, of this bunch. And the reason Acro Ink ends up at number four, not in the top three, because of its very, very dark experience. It's a very, very dark experience, and it's not necessarily very easy to wear, but it's still really, really great fragrance, really, really smoky, dark, oily, rubbery, leathery, burned, vetiver, black ink, jasmine, birch. The thing I forgot to mention earlier is I, I don't get a lot of jasmine, but very, very minute amounts of it. I think for me, what's running the show is the vetiver, black ink, and birch. This is what's running the, the show here, but the jasmine, minute amounts of it but still really really great release i hope you guys get to try ink uh, go sample it and come back and let me know it might be a little challenging for some people and that, i thought that's what was going to happen but it's not not to me and i do love vetiver i really 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 do love vetiver so the next three are definitely the cream of the crop for this brand they're kind of gourmand style fragrances first one is Dark. Dark is focused on chocolate addiction and it's dark chocolate and it's really really delicious. Really really delicious dark chocolate. There's definitely a nuttiness there as well. So it's cocoa, dark chocolate, cinnamon, hazelnut, vanilla. So cocoa and dark chocolate. So there's a creaminess and also a dusty powderiness here from the cocoa. I, I actually sprinkle cocoa on top of my cappuccinos every morning. So I like that smell. And you can pick it up here. So not only do you have the creaminess of the dark chocolate, you have that dustiness of the cocoa, dusting of cocoa. But there's definitely a nuttiness here. The hazelnut kind of does remind me a little bit of something like Nutella and of course you got some spice from the cinnamon and uh, definitely the creamy syrupy vanilla in here. Delicious fragrance. Number three is dark and number two is awake. Oh yeah, what I like about awake, I'm a coffee addict and definitely <laughs> I agree with this one. There's definitely addiction to coffee and this one smells fantastic. For me, this is very much about coffee with cardamom and I'm Middle Eastern. I grew up drinking coffee with cardamom. I, I love this combination. It's fantastic. But uh, this is coffee, cardamom, there's a little lemon here and vetiver as well. But for me, it's mostly about the coffee with the cardamom. There's definitely not a cappuccino milky kind of quality here. It's just drip coffee with cardamom and in the Middle East, they don't add milk to the coffee it's usually just this really dark thick muddy coffee with really really intense cardamom uh, you know flavoring in there really really great look I've used up plenty of this one and then of course number uh, one is a uh, smoke and I think smoke and uh, awake are pretty close but I still love smoke and the, the way that this ha this fragrance you know discovery happened when I was in Los Angeles I had visited the uh, scent club there and it was a pretty warm day and I s sprayed this on I thought wow what what is this I, I didn't 
really react to it until outside when the heat hit me and I started smelling how the fragrance opens up. And I think when I first sampled this fragrance, it was a cool day and it didn't come alive. This thing comes alive in the heat and opens up and becomes something more like a tobacco, vanille tobacco kind of fragrance. But when it's cool outside, it's mostly smoke because there's definitely a very, very smoky presence here, major. When it's not warm, when it's cool outside, it's mostly about the smoke and it is called smoke but for me it opens up in the heat or when your body heats up you start experiencing more of like a tobacco smoky ashy tobacco experience it's Balkans tobacco leaves nicotine Cade, benzoin, and tonka beans. It's this benzoin note that really does wonders to this particular fragrance. It's no vanilla mentioned. Vanilla and tobacco go hand in hand. But here, they replaced the vanilla with the benzoin, so it has a resinous, sweet experience, and it sweetens up the fragrance. And of course, as I said, in the heat, this comes alive. And even though this kind of a fragrance is not necessarily appropriate to wear when it's warm outside, I do. It smells fantastic. And I like that sweetness and the smokiness together. It's a great fragrance. Anyway, smoke is at number one. Still is. I absolutely love that fragrance. But you know, don't sleep on ink. Get some samples from somewhere, or if they have small sizes, maybe get a small size. Try and wear it and see how people react to it. Do you, will you get a positive reaction like I did? And I, I was not expecting it whatsoever. I thought because of its darkness, this oily, rubbery, burned leather kind of experience, I didn't think I was gonna get that kind of reaction, but I did. But maybe you guys won't, I don't know. Uh, maybe people here are a little more adventurous. This is how it all happened in San Francisco. Either way, it's a great fragrance. Check it out, Ink from Acro. But let me know your thoughts on Ink if you've sampled it. Let me know your thoughts on the entire collection. Are you one of those people that doesn't like malt like I? I don't like it. Do you like night? Can you tolerate the cumin? And are you as obsessed with uh, smoke and um, awake as I am? Because both of them are really, really delicious from this house. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video on Acro Fragrances and Acro Ink. If you have any questions or comments, please do let me, let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Other than that, I appreciate you tuning in. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.